A, dobry wieczór, Jany. Dobry wieczór, pan Arabie. Jak to je wenku, pan Arabie? Krasnie, Jany. I wish you didn't have to go now, just as... I know, darling. <laughs> anyway, I should only be gone two months. I suppose you couldn't call it off. Well, hardly. Everything's been booked and my sister's expecting me. But you know, she's been so ill. The family think it's very odd if I didn't go. I know, I'm crazy to suggest it. Don't worry. I promise not to look at any strange men in salon. I'll be back before you realize I've gone. You'll be so wrapped up in that job of yours. Mm. Eric, what's the matter? I haven't got the job anymore. What happened? Was it anything to do with Lady Breasty? Why'd you ask that? Well, she's just come in. Where? Over there. You don't like her, do you? I think she's one of the most beautiful women I've ever met. One of the least likable. She's always been very good to me. I hope you reciprocate it. She happens to be married to my boss. Your ex-boss? Yes. And she had nothing to do with your leaving him? Nothing. Oh, well, I think he's a stinker anyway. He's worse than that. Tell me more. No, I can't. Not here. Uh, waiter, don't mind me, no. please. Let's go somewhere where you can. I didn't want to upset you just when you were going away. Nothing you say against Lord Braestead could possibly upset me. <laughs> All right. Oh dear, we'll have to pass her when we leave. Oh, don't worry, we'll only wait a second. Good night, madam. Thank you. Good Thank night. you, sir. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, dearie. Mary, you can let Hello, You know Mr. and Mrs. Watkins, Mr. and Mrs. Mitchell, don't you? How do you do? Won't you join us? No, we're just leaving. Mary's off the salon early in the morning. Oh, never mind. Arthur tells me you're coming to the house later on. Yes, we have something to discuss. Well, don't keep him up too late. I won't. Good night. Good night. Good night, Good night to you. Well, let's have it. I don't see why you should be worried by it. Please, Derek. Well, you remember last week you met a friend of mine, Stefan Mikla? Yes. Did I tell you why he was here? Something to do with refugees, wasn't it? Yes, that's right. UNRDP. I never know what all those initials mean. Well, in this case, they happen to mean about 20 millions of our money. Do you know who controls it? You? <laughs> no, worse luck. Lord Braisted. It's supposed to be spent on the resettlement of DPs and the relief of people who are starving. And isn't it? No. Stefan came here last week because he'd been dismissed. He's been in charge of the administration of the fund in South and East Europe. He was doing a wonderful job. Well, then why was he fired? Because he was doing it too well. Too well? Yes. Too much of the money was finding its way to the people for whom it was really intended. Some of the high-ups had a better idea than that. By devoting the money to their own work people and to various political organizations, they hoped to do themselves a bit of good. Only Stefan stood in the way, so they dismissed him. But surely Lord Braisted wouldn't allow that. Most people would do a great deal for 500,000 pounds. Do you mean he was bribed? Yes. What are you going to do? Stefan wants me to go and see the Prime Minister. You can't do that. No. I told him I can't do anything until he gets me definite proof. That's why he's gone back to Prague now, to get a statement from the bank's director. Sorry, sir. You're not allowed to park here after dark. Why not? Don't ask me why not. It's the regulations. We're only talking. Yes. What did you think we were doing? I'm not paid to think, miss. I'm paid to move you on. Now, come along, sir, please.
Good evening, Wolf. Good evening, Miss. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Where is everybody? The family are in the drawing room, Miss. Nobody in the library? No, Miss. Good. Come on, dear. Derek, don't you think you ought to tell Lord Braisted what you heard? I have. What happened? Oh, he denied it, of course. At first he was very angry. Then he laughed. He said he admired my courage, but not my common sense. But you could see he was frightened. And then quite suddenly he asked me if it was Stepan who had told me. Why should he ask that? Because it's true. Then he fired you. No, not quite. He was too smart for that. He just said that he hated to see me make such a fool of myself. I couldn't go on being his secretary, of course, but he would give me a three years assignment in West Africa. How nice to him. Yes, wasn't it? And that's not all. In view of my long and faithful service, he proposed to make me a present of 10,000 pounds. 10,000 pounds? What for? Yes, what for? Derek, my father's the cleverest man in the world. You've got to tell him what you just told me and let him advise you. No, I don't want you mixed up in this. Look, he's in the next room now. Let me talk to him. No, I'd rather do it my own way. What are you going to do? I've got a date with Lord Braisted in half an hour. I'm going to tell him what he can do with his West African job and give him a chance to call the whole thing off. And if he doesn't? If he doesn't, I shall take the morning plane to Prague, warn Stepan, and get conclusive evidence. Derek, I wish I could go with you. So do I. Promise not to do anything silly till I get back. I'll try not to. Derek. I do love you, sir. I began to wonder if you were ever going to tell me. I meant to wait until all this was over. Glad you didn't. Yes, but let's not tell anybody else until it is all over. Anything you say, sir. No, I've really got to go. Darling, don't let him bully you. I won't. Let me know what happens. Promise me if anything goes wrong while I'm away, you'll talk to Father. All right. Goodbye, darling. Bye. Come back safe. Hello, darling. Who is that? Oh, it's Derek, Have I met him? I don't think so. It's the first time he's been here. Oh, well, I long ago gave up all hope of remembering which young man it is at the moment. Say good night to your father, darling. I will. He's still working. Good night. Good night. Hello, dear. Everything packed? Nearly. I'm going to miss you, you know. Nonsense. You're usually so busy you don't know whether I'm here or not. It's really as bad as that. <laughs> Tickets in order? Yes, Walter's has seen to everything. I wish I could see you off myself, but I'm afraid I'm in court all day. Don't worry, Mother's coming. Good. Give my love to your sister. See that she gets well. I will. i better go up and finish my packing. Good night, darling. Good night, dear. God bless you. You surely didn't think you could buy me for 10,000 pounds? Nobody wants to buy you. I lost my temper just now because I hate to see a clever young man who served me faithfully for six years go and make a fool of himself. I know what I'm doing. I sincerely trust you do. Tomorrow morning I shall be on my way to Prague. Please yourself, of course, but you'll be wasting your time. I'm not so sure about that. I am. I suggest you think it over before you do anything rash. Good night. Derek, I had to talk to you. I'm so sorry. You must be terribly upset. No, just angry. But I always thought he was your best friend. Who, your husband? I was talking about Count Mikla. What about him? Haven't you heard? No, what is it? Well, Arthur got the news two hours ago. I was sure he would have told you. He committed suicide in Prague last night. No. Apparently, he was in some business trouble. His valet found him. He shot himself. So they made it look like suicide. What do you mean? It was suicide. There isn't any doubt about it, is there? No, there isn't any doubt about it at all. Stepan didn't commit suicide. He was murdered. Derek. I'm afraid I'm very late. Well, the family are in bed, sir. Miss Mary, too? Yes, sir. Oh. Well. Will you see that she gets there before she leaves in the morning? Certainly, sir. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night, sir. Not 
feeling nervous, are you, darling? Of course not, Mummy. Miss Mary Deering! Here. Oh. A package for you, Miss Deering. Sign here, please. Another admirer? No, the same one. He evidently has expensive taste. Thank or you. Or does he just know that you have? All passengers from flight H204 for Cairo, Iraq, and Ceylon. That's you, Please darling. Goodbye. Goodbye, darling. Look after Daphne, won't you? Don't worry, I'll just... Thank you, Morton. Lady Brace is called, lady. I've shown her into the drawing room. Oh. Thank you, Morton. Good afternoon. I'm sorry I wasn't at home. I've been seeing my daughter off to Ceylon. I'm afraid it's a very inconvenient moment to call, but Sir John asked us to be here at five o'clock. I hope you don't mind. Of course not. We make our living that way, you know. <laughs> you must have some tea. No, thank you. Then I will. I'm afraid I must be getting old. If I don't have my tea, I feel empty. Particularly after an afternoon in an airport. I beg your pardon, lady, but can Cook have a word with you? Oh, dear, what have I forgotten to order now? Will you excuse me? Surely. May I speak to you about something else, lady? Yes? Uh, it's this note, lady. Uh, a young gentleman left it last night to Miss Mary, but in the bustle this morning, I forgot to give it her. Which young gentleman? I don't know his name, lady, but I did hear Miss Mary call him Derek. Oh, all right, Morton. I expect it'll keep. Leave it over there. I'll send it on to her. Very good, lady. Sir John is expecting us. Will you step this way, sir? John has just come in. I'll tell him. Oh, good afternoon. Ah, good afternoon, Sir John. I think you know Lord Braisted. Yes, of course. How do you do? How do you do? Well, I think we'd better go into the library. Lady Braisted is in the drawing room, sir. Oh, is she? Then we're going there. It's very good of you to see us here, Sir John. Lord Braisted would have been glad to go to your chambers. But you understand, the newspapers are so alert that if he's seen anywhere unusual, there are instant rumours. Of course. And just at the moment, we can't afford rumours. As bad as that, is it? Worse. Hello, my dear. Good afternoon, Lady Bristed. Good afternoon, Lady Bristed. Hope we haven't kept you waiting too long. No, of course not. Do sit down, will you? Thank you. No, thank you. Mr. Mercer, what can I do for you? Lord Bristed wants your advice, Sir John. He's faced with the prospect of bringing an action for libel. That's quite simple. My advice is don't bring it. Nobody ever brings an action for libel without regretting it in the end. The only people who make anything out of it are the lawyers. Sometimes an action for libel is necessary, of course. Only if it's a matter of life or death. No, yeah, but this is. I see. Then perhaps you'd better tell me more about it. I take it you know something of the scheme Lord Braisted is administering for the government, UNRDP. Of course. For this work, Lord Braisted has been employing a confidential secretary named Waterhouse. I think you must know him, Sir John. No, I've never heard of him. Oh, I'm sorry. No, he was much more than a secretary. I regarded him as a friend. In point of fact, he's a young scoundrel. Well, I can't believe that. My wife still believes him. Is she wrong? Well, you shall judge for yourself. His work on the relief scheme brought him into contact with a man called Mickler, Count Mickler. He was in charge of our organization in South and East Europe. Yesterday, Waterhouse came to see me. He said he wanted money. A good deal of money. Any particular amount mentioned? 20,000 pounds. Did he say why he wanted the money? I asked him that. At first, he was evasive. He said something about a woman. Then he changed. Finally, he told me that he and Mickler had been gambling on the stock exchange and had gotten into difficulties. Did he ask for the money as a loan? No. You mean he tried to blackmail you? Yes. On what grounds? He said that Mickler had discovered the whole thing was a fraud and that unless the money was paid, he would go to the Prime Minister and say so. I see. Was anybody present when he made this threat? Nobody. We were quite alone. He took good care of that. Then there's not much evidence of it. My word. Alone? Isn't that enough? Perhaps. What exactly did he suggest that you'd done? Diverted funds from UNRDP to my friends and myself. Any specific amount mentioned? Oh, yes. I was supposed to have received about £500,000. In England? No, the money had been paid into the International Bank of Prague. Lord Bristed, I don't need to ask if there's any possible ground for these allegations. Oh, none, whatever. As far as your knowledge goes, no such similar sum has been paid into the Bank of Prague. I'm sure there hasn't. And that could be proved beyond any possible doubt. Of course. 
the books could be examined. Oh, yes. There would seem to be no possible evidence except, of course, Waterhouse. None. I think I ought to tell you, Sir John, that I have already advised Lord Braisted that Waterhouse should be prosecuted for blackmail. Oh, no. I'm sorry, Lady Braisted, but oh, yes. It's the obvious course. But Lord Braisted refuses to take my advice. Oh, why? Because it's impossible. One section of public opinion is against this scheme already. It's costing a lot of money, and they're not very interested in feeding starving Europe when they're not exactly well-fed themselves. It only needs a scandal like this, and the whole thing would collapse. That's why I've come to you. What am I to do? There seem to be only two alternatives. First is to prosecute young Walter House for trying to obtain £20,000 by threats. That, I gather, is impossible. Quite. The other is do nothing. What do you mean? Sit still and let him say what he likes? Not quite. The next step is to get hold of Count Mikla. How does that help if he and Waterhouse are in this together? Get him to come and see you. At least we shall find out if that part of the story is true. But he... Yes, Lady Wasted? It doesn't matter. And in the meantime, if Waterhouse goes to the Prime Minister? Then you would have to take proceedings. You agree, Sir John? Yes, that would seem to be a matter of life or death. Thank you. We'll keep you informed. Goodbye, Lady Wasted. Uh, my name is Waterhouse. Yes, sir. All right, after that, four o'clock. Goodbye. Downing, what is it? Waterhouse. He's not only been to the Prime Minister, he's put the whole thing in writing. No. Yes. Well, the fat's in a fire now, no mistake. Well, what are you going to do? What do you think? Fight, of course. Get Mr. Don Daring. Arthur, how much truth is there in the story of Derek's? Enough. I see. You have to tell Sir John about Count Mickler now. Yes. But at least they can't call him. Waterhouse can do enough damage on his own. Perhaps I can talk to him. No, no, no. You stay out of this. I can handle it. I only wanted to help. Don't worry. I know you'll stand by me. Yes. <laughs> Hello, Sir John. I've got to see you urgently. Waterhouse, he's been to the Prime Minister. There can be no doubt about why the Prime Minister wants to see you. No, he told me Waterhouse had been to see him with some rather startling information. I see. Thank you. Oh, no, thank you, Sir John. And in that case, you should tell the Prime Minister that you've already instructed your solicitor to take proceedings. Will you see to that, Marcel? Very well. Did you get in touch with Count Mikla? No, I'm afraid not. Surely. For a very simple reason, he's dead. He committed suicide the night before last. That's unfortunate, to say the least of it. But why? He lost his nerve and took the easy way out. Are you sure that he committed suicide? Oh, I don't think there's any doubt about it. He was found in his apartment, he'd blown his brains out. Sir John seems sceptical. No, I was just wondering what other people might think or say. What could they say? This man claimed to have discovered a fraud. He was the only person who knew the details. Suspicious minds might think that he was safer dead. You mean that some people might think he'd been murdered? It's possible. That would be quite absurd. Obviously. Sir John, may I say something? Of course. No, darling, I think you'd better leave this to us. But why? Perhaps Lady Bracey can make a suggestion. I think I can. You see, I know Derek so much better than you do. I don't believe he ever thought of blackmail. He believes every word he said. He's simply been misled by someone much cleverer than he is. But why did he demand £20,000? Well, somehow I feel certain that's been misunderstood. Sir John, let me talk to him. He'll talk much more freely to me than to anybody else. No, I'd rather you didn't. Why? Sir John will tell you why. I think your husband is right, Lady Braisted. If ever there should be the necessity for proceedings in court, your interview might be misinterpreted. Words can be twisted. No, conversations are quite useless. What we want is something written. Why? Because it is the dream of every cross-examiner to be presented with something which his adversary has written and forgotten. Would that help? Certainly. Might even win the case. It might, hmm? Why, yes. Do you know of anything of that sort? No, I was just thinking. Goodbye, Sir John. Goodbye. All right, coming. Oh. Hello, Lily. May I come in? Yes. You don't seem very pleased to see me. You expect me to be? Derek. What's the matter? We 
We used to be such good friends. We agreed that all that was over when you married Arthur. Well, not that we still can't be friends, surely. You know, Arthur's been very good to me. Oh, I don't doubt it. Nobody could wish for a better husband. He's been kind, sympathetic, generous. With other people's money? That's not fair. It's true. You've no proof? I shall have in a couple of days. I'm leaving for Prague tomorrow. I'd be there now if I could have got a passage. Change your mind and stay here. I'm afraid I can't. Derek, Arthur's done everything for you. He gave me a job, yes, when you asked him to. Isn't that enough? No. What more do you want? If I would say that I wanted to see justice done, I suppose you'd think I was being pompous. I would rather, yes. Well, I'm afraid that's what I do want. Then nothing I can say will make you change your mind. No. You make me feel very miserable. I'm sorry, I don't mean to, Helen. Please. Please drop this. For my sake. No, I can't. All right. I think you're going to be sorry. Forgive me disturbing you so late, but the matter is extremely urgent. Just a moment, Mr. Waterhouse. May I ask why you come here? To ask your advice. Professionally? In a way, yes. You Would see... your inquiry be in any way connected with the case of Bracelet against Waterhouse? Yes. And I think I ought to tell you that I've been retained to act for Lord Bracelet. Oh, I see. I didn't know. Now that you do know, you'll realise that I can't discuss the matter with you. Yes, of course. Very well. Good night, Mr. Waterhouse. Good night. Matter. Was that too hard on him? No. Nice face, don't you think? Was it? Looked like any other face to me. Did it, dear? Oh, perhaps you're right. It's your pick. I do so hate being interrupted this time of night. What is the list this for? That fool Mercer. Thank you. Plenty for you, darling. Oh, good, it's for Mummy. anything wrong? No. No, it's just that it's a new sensation. What is? Being jilted. It's never happened to me before. What on earth are you talking about? Nothing. It's just a letter from Derek, that's all. Oh, is that all? Oh, come on. What does he say? Dearest, until everything has been settled and my name cleared, I think it's only fair to tell you that we should stop communicating with one another. I'm sure your father would be most embarrassed if he knew you were writing to me. So I shall quite understand if I don't hear again. Yours? Derek. How do you know what he's talking about? Not really, no. I'm going to find out.
now we come to the night of the 27th, the night on which Count Nicola telephoned you to come to his hotel. What appeared to you to be his mental condition? He appeared to me to be very much distressed. Now, will you tell the members of the jury exactly what Count Nicola said to you? And this is, of course, Sir John Jakes. I object to nothing. The rules of evidence must be observed, Mr. Man. If your logic pleases. The rules of evidence do not allow a question to be put so simply. We must try a more roundabout method. Ah. In consequence of something that Count Mickler had said to you, did you consider it your duty to see Lord Braisted? I did. Did you tell Lord Braisted what it was that Count Mickler had said to you? I did. Then, will you tell the members of the jury what it was that you told Lord Braisted Count Mickler had told to you? I told him that Count Mickler had discovered that the whole scheme was nothing but a fraud. In what way was it a fraud? Funds which belonged to UNRDP and were earmarked for relief and resettlement were actually being used for other purposes. Such as? Such as the payment of people working for various firms and political organizations. Did Count Mickler suggest that Lord Braisted knew of this? Yes. And he approved? Yes. What else did you tell Lord Braisted? That he had received some of the money himself that he had been squared. I suppose you mean bribed? Uh, yes, my lord. And was the amount of the bribe mentioned? Yes, 500,000 pounds. Members of the jury, I think I ought to warn you at this point. This conversation is not evidence of the truth of the allegation. It is merely evidence that this witness stated those facts to Lord Braston. Yes, my lord. And did you report this to Lord Braston? Yes. And what did he say? He pretended to be furiously angry. Pretended? He can't ask that. Why do you say pretended? That is how it seemed to me. His anger didn't last very long. And what happened next? He laughed at me. He said that I had been deceived by a clever crook. And did he condescend to identify the crook? Yes. Count Mickler. Now, I want to leave that for the moment. My lord, we have here a copy of a letter written by this witness to Count Mickler. Count Mickler being dead, of course, it's impossible to produce the original. I don't know whether Sir John objects to my using a copy. I object to nothing. Very well. Then here's the letter. Dear Stepan, I will see Lord Braisted tomorrow. Did you write this letter to Count Mickler? I did. Immediately after leaving him. Ah. Now, let us get back to the interview. Did Lord Braisted know at that time that Count Mickler had returned to France? Yes, I told him. I said that Stepan had gone back to bring me conclusive evidence. Did Lord Braisted hint that anything might happen to Count Mickler? Yes. He said that he would never come back. And did you draw any inference from what uh, Lord Braisted said as to why Count Mickler should not come back? I did not at the time. I do now. Well, I can't question any more about that. Now, that jury would like to form their own conclusions. At any rate, I think we can take it from what you've said that Lord Braisted totally denied your accusation. He did, my lord. You wanted me, Lady Braisted? Yes. What is the matter with Sir John? I haven't noticed anything out of the ordinary. You must have. It's so obvious. He's hardly troubled to cross-examine anybody. He's letting Derek say just what he likes. That junior of his would soon stop it. But Sir John just sits there and does nothing. I think we must assume that he knows what he's doing. Can't you speak to him? That would be most inadvisable in the middle of a case. If you don't, I shall. Uh, please, Lady Braisted, I beg of you to do no such thing. Then try to make him see reason. We've got to win this case. I'll do my best, but please leave everything to me. I, I must get back into court now. And now we come to what is really the main issue in this case. I think it is common ground that Lord Braisted had said you were too gullible to remain his secretary. He did. And then, did he make you an offer? He did. Now, oh, this is very important. Take your time and speak slowly. Watch his lordship's pen. Now, first, was there anyone else present or were you alone? We were alone. There were no witnesses? None. What did he say? He said that he was sorry we should have to part, but that in memory of our long association, <clears throat> he would offer me a three-year assignment in West Africa. Has Lord Wasted influence in West Africa? He has influence everywhere. Did he offer you anything else? Yes. He said that if I'd be willing to forget all I'd heard, he'd make me a present of 10,000 pounds. How did you interpret that offer? As a bribe to shut my mouth. You can't say that. Can't you? Aren't you going to stop him? No. 
I think you'd better confine yourself to telling us what Lord Brace had said. Your last question was quite irregular. I apologize, my lord. Now, I want to take you back to what Lord Brace had said about that interview. <clears throat> After speaking of your appearance and agitation, I gather there's no dispute about that. No. Lord Brace did then said this. Mr. Waterhouse said that I was a party to the fraud and that if I did not pay him the sum of £20,000, he would communicate that fact to the Prime Minister. Mr. Waterhouse, I ask you, is that true? It is a lie. Did you say anything even of a motive assembling these words? Never. It is a lie. No, they were. <clears throat> now, we know that Count Mickler had gone back to Prague. Was the next thing you heard that he had committed suicide? He did not commit suicide. He was murdered. You cannot possibly know that. My lord, I knew him. He was my oldest friend. He could not possibly kill himself. Wait. Sir John, I notice you are not objecting to all this. My lord, I gather the witness desires an opportunity of saying anything unpleasant he can think of against Lord Bracedale. I have no desire to stop him. Sir John has no right to say that. Mr. Mannering, you will please keep your witness in order. I have told you before, you must only tell us of facts within your own personal knowledge. We are not concerned with your opinions. You had heard that Count Mickler was dead. Go on. Now, there's just one other thing. In going to the Prime Minister, had you any object in view other than doing your duty? None. Thank you, Mr. Waterhouse. <clears throat> it is almost four o'clock. I propose to adjourn until tomorrow. Sir John, Mr. Mannering, this case has, of course, been expedited because of its public importance, but I must know something about my list. Uh, how much longer are we likely to last? Mr. Waterhouse is my only witness, my lord. I finished my examination. How long a cross-examination takes depends entirely on Sir John. Sir John, my cross-examination will be very short, my lord. Then we may hope to finish tomorrow. Undoubtedly. Thank you. Then we will adjourn until 10.30 tomorrow, Sir John. change the whole course of this case. Oh, what? Uh, Lord Bracedy prefers to tell you himself. He'd like you to come round and see him this evening, if you would. I have to be out to dinner. Very well. Ten o'clock? I'll tell Lord Bracedy. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Sir John. I'm sorry to disturb you like this, but I had to speak to you. We're losing our case, aren't we? I think you're being over pessimistic. We are. I know it. At first, everything was going so well. Everybody seemed to be on our side. Then the whole atmosphere changed. You mustn't let that depress you. That's what I'm here for. Fight it. But you can't do that. I must. You can't. And I'll tell you why. Because you don't believe in my husband. You don't believe Derek asked him for money. You don't believe Count Mickler committed suicide. You don't believe anything he said. That's ridiculous. I always trust my client. Even when he's lying to you? If I knew he was lying, I wouldn't be acting for him. But if you suspected it? I don't deal in suspicions. I deal in facts. Preferably in writing. Why do you say that? I seem to remember your saying that what you really needed to win this case was a letter in Derek's handwriting. One that would incriminate him. Yes. Perhaps I could give it to you. Is this the new development Mr. Mercer's talking about? Mercer knows nothing about this. Nobody knows about it except you and Derek. Am I to see it? That depends. On what? If I gave it you to use in this case, who else would have to see it? And that depends on how it was used. The judge certainly, and the other side. Would my husband have to see it? It would be difficult to prevent that, wouldn't it? I suppose so. Lady Bristed, is this a love letter? Yes. The only one? No, but the only one that matters. Are you quite sure that it really does matter? It'll decide this case. I see. What do you suggest I do? 
You mustn't ask me that. I'm acting for her husband. In his interest, it should obviously be produced. That puts me in a pretty position, doesn't it? If the letter is read, my husband must win. If it isn't, he'll probably lose. I shall lose either way. Wait a minute. Your husband's asked me to go and see him tonight about some fresh information, which Mercer says will prove conclusive. If that is true, then it may not be necessary for you to say a word. And if it isn't? Then I'm afraid you must make up your mind what you're going to do. I see. Sir John, may I ask you a personal question? Of course. What do you really think of me? That's a difficult question to answer on the spur of the moment. Try. Very well. I think you are beautiful, intelligent, shrewd, gracious and generous. Would you say I had everything I wanted? As much as any of us can hope for, yes. Now, shall I tell you what I was like when Arthur found me? If you wish. I was the eldest of a family of nine. We lived in a slum. My father drank. My mother died when I was twelve. I learned about life the hard way. I learned about men the hard way, too. I kept myself alive by taking what I wanted wherever I could find it. I was pretty successful up to a point. I made many friends. None of them lasting ones. Arthur rescued me from all that. Why are you telling me all this? But I want you to understand the man you're acting for. I know you think he lives by taking chances, even that he's a bit of an adventurer. Well, by your standards, perhaps he is. But he's something more than that, particularly to me. May I ask you one question? Yes. It concerns this letter. Derek doesn't mean that much to me. Do you think I'd allow that letter to be read if he did? No, I suppose not. We shall see you tonight, then. Yes, tonight. Goodbye. Hello, John. Hello, Fane. I thought you'd be burning them with my lawyer, preparing your cross-examination. Not likely. What do you think juniors are paid for? Scotch? Only a double. Large risk, Mr. Mannering, please. I suppose you've got a swift one up your sleeve for me tomorrow? Oh, just the usual stuff. Oh, by the way, do you think we shall finish tomorrow? If you don't interrupt me too much. How's the daughter? Oh, she's fine. <laughs> I bought her first pony last week. If she rides as well as her father, she'll probably break her neck. How right you are. Look, why don't you bring Margaret down to see her sometime? I'd like to win. Set the wing. Good, I'll ask her. Ah. Well, I'm just going to pop down to the billiard room. You coming? No, thanks. I've got some work to do tonight, haven't you? What do you think juniors are paid for? Cheer here. But this is just what Sir John asked for. He said he wanted something in Waterhouse's handwriting. And I think there's no doubt that when he reads this letter, he will consider it conclusive evidence. Sir John Deering, my lord. Ah, oh, good evening, Sir John. How kind of you to come. Good evening. Good evening, Dr. Bracedale. Good evening. Hello, Mercer. Good evening, Sir John. Let me give you a drink. No, thank you. Some coffee? Thank you. No, sure. Well, let's get to business. Now, you said you hoped for something in Waterhouse's handwriting which would incriminate him. Well, we've got it. Yes. Does Lady Bracedale know this? No, the only people who know anything about it are Mr. Mercer and myself. Here it is. How did this come into your possession? We found it in this briefcase. The case belonged to Mickler. Those are his initials. Where did this come from? From Mickler's apartment. I mean, how did you get it? Mickler's valet brought it over at my request. And this is the only thing you found in it? Apart from one or two unimportant papers, yes. I thought you told me that everything had been examined scrupulously already. I did. And why didn't this come to light before? Because it was hidden. Hidden where? In the lining of the case. How do you know that? I found it there myself. You can see that the lining has been stripped. Who suggested stripping the lining of the case? As a matter of fact, I think I did. I see. Do you know Waterhouse's handwriting, of course? Yes. Did he write this? I had no doubt about it. But to make quite certain, I had it examined by handwriting experts. They haven't had time to make the fullest tests, but they're quite satisfied already. Juries don't like experts. We thought you'd find this letter quite conclusive. It is quite conclusive, if it is admitted or believed. You're not very encouraging. Lord Bracedale, I shouldn't be helping you by sitting here and telling you the strong points of your case, those you know already. I'm merely pointing out how this letter may appear to your opponents. It has been discovered, somewhat fortuitously, at the very last moment. It's written to Count Mikla. He's dead. There's only one living person who can say whether it's genuine or not, and he denies it. Against that, you have what? 
the evidence of the experts. It doesn't look quite so conclusive put like that, does it? But if he admits it. And that's an end of the case. He will admit it. He must admit it. We'll see. Is the valet here? Yes. And I think I ought to see it. I'll call him. Come in, will you please? Good evening. What is your name? John Meyer. I understand you are a valet to Count Mickler. Sir John. Uh, Lady Brace is asking to see you. She says it's very urgent. Where is she? Uh, in the consultation room. I'd like to speak to Sir John alone. Very well. Sir John, I must talk to you. I have to be in court in five minutes. This won't take long. Would you like to sit down? No, thank you. I've been awake all night thinking. That letter my husband found. Suppose Derek denies writing it. Do you think he will? I don't know. Suppose he does. Then it's your husband's word against his. But the handwriting experts. Juries don't like experts. Experts are apt to qualify for you, they say. You don't believe in that letter yourself, do you? It isn't a matter of what I believe or disbelieve. It's what the jury thinks that counts. But at least you can't have any doubts about this one. Are you sure you want me to read this? Does that convince you? Yes. Do you think it'll convince the jury? Undoubtedly. Very well. You may use it. May I see the others now, please? When were these written? During the past few months. Did you know that Waterhouse was trying to get money from your husband? Not exactly. What does that mean? He asked me several times to leave Arthur and go away with him. To put him off, I told him we'd need money to do that. He told me he knew of a way of getting hold of some. I never dreamed it would come to this. I see. Does your husband know that you've shown me this? No. I'm afraid he'll have to. Why? I'm acting for him. I can't introduce a piece of evidence like this without his authority. But he'll hear it in court. Isn't that enough? No. Mercil is outside. Get him to call him. Don't you feel you better think this over? I've thought it over. Mr. Mercil, please ask Lord Bracey to come here quickly. I'll tell him he's just gone into court. Thank you. You're a very brave woman. I leave you alone now. I have to go ahead, give these letters to Mercer. He'll know what to do. Thank you. Good morning, Sir John. Good morning. You wanted to see me? Yes. Please shut the door. Good morning, Payne. Good morning. Oh, by the way, Margaret said she'd love to come down next time. Good, we look forward to that. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Miss Couch? Yes, we invited you, sir. Silence. one of your members addressed to me last night. It has occurred to me that there may be some doubts in the minds of some of you as to the precise issue you are trying. I will tell you. Lord Braisted is claiming damages for the libel contained in Mr. Waterhouse's letter to the Prime Minister, charging him with fraud. Now, Mr. Waterhouse says he believed the charge to be true and that it was his duty to write such a letter. In other words, he claims privilege. Now, the plaintiff's answer to that is that he was actuated by malice 
and the malice suggested is Mr. Waterhouse's endeavour to obtain £20,000 by threats. Now, that is the real issue you have to decide. Namely, who is telling the truth as to what happened at the interview on March the 22nd? Does that uh, answer your question? Yes, thank you, my lord. Yes, Sir John. Will Mr. Waterhouse please go back into the box? On the 22nd of March, the day of your interview with Lord Bracely, had you any claim upon him which could possibly justify your asking him for £20,000? None. So if you did ask him for £20,000, it must have been what we call blackmail. I never asked him for money. It's a lie. Quite. Either Lord Braisted is lying or you are. Lord Braisted is lying. One of you is lying. We have to find out which. I think most of us know that already. I understand that in the fraud which Count Mikla described to you, each one of the directors of the International Bank of Prague was implicated. Yes. As far as you've been able to discover, does each one of these gentlemen enjoy the highest reputation in his own country? How could he possibly know that? Please. You have made the most exhaustive inquiries, have you not? Yes. You have spent weeks in Prague, exploring every avenue, in order to find out, as far as you could, anything against them. I have made inquiries. Then will you tell me now, does each of these gentlemen, as far as you know, bear the highest possible reputation? I know nothing against them. Somewhat grudging admission, but I'll take it. Now, you've seen each of these gentlemen in the witness box? Yes. And you've heard them swear that not only is there no truth in the charge of fraud, but no shadow of suspicion upon which such a charge could be based. I have. Do you believe them? No. I believe they are lying. Oh, our list of liars seems to be increasing. First Lord Braisted. Yes. Then all the directors of the bank. Yes. Isn't he allowed to express his views? Mr. Mannering, I will cross-examine you later, if you so desire, but one at a time. Mr. Mannering, please do not interrupt. Then that's quite clear. Perfectly. You'd better get these to Sir John right away. Yes. Aren't you coming into court? No. I'd rather stay here, if you don't mind. Very well. You have been to Prague yourself making inquiries? Yes. Have you been afforded every facility? Have you been allowed to examine any book or document you wish? Yes. And after all that, can you give me the name of any human being except Count Mika, who has ever suggested to you that the scheme was a swindle? No. Then you still persist in your allegation that Lord Braisted was party to a fraud? Yes. That is why he tried to bribe me with ten thousand pounds. Then it comes to this. The whole case stands or falls on the one question. Who is telling the truth? You or Lord Bracey? Yes. Then I must deal solely with that. Mr. Waterhouse, on the date of your interview with Lord Bracey, though you're not badly in need of money... Not more than everybody is. What do you mean by that? Everybody is hard up these days. Was there not a special reason in your case? No. On that date, were you not madly in love with the lady? Well, Lord, I protest most strongly. Please be quiet, Mr. Mannering. Sir John, do you persist in that question? I shall refuse to answer. You will do exactly as you are told. Lord, at some time in this case, that question must be answered. If the witness desires to postpone that time, I do not object. My Lord, may I say something? You had better not. The question is not persisted in. If it should arise again, you will have every opportunity of being heard. At the time you came to see Lord Braisted, where were you living? In my flat. Quite sure? Quite sure. You weren't living in the Savoy Hotel? No. Are you sure? Oh, I, I remember now. I stayed there for a fortnight while my flat was being decorated. And you'd forgotten that? Is it important? Very. I asked you just now if at that date you were short of money. Was Count Mikla also short of money? Certainly not. Do you know a man named Johann Meyer? No. Will Johann Meyer please stand up? Do you know that man? Yes, I believe he was Stepper. I mean, Count Mickler's servant. I notice you call him Stepper. Was he a very intimate friend of yours? He was. The sort of friend to whom you would be willing to lend money? Yes. Did that man come to borrow money for Count Mickler? Never. Did that man come to you while you were staying at the Boy Hotel? To borrow money to pay his own hotel? Oh, that. Then he did. 
Yes, but that was only temporary. The, the banks were shut. And you had forgotten it. My lord, did Count Mickler ask you for money? Yes, my lord, but only as a friend. That is all you were asked? Did you ever write to Count Mickler to tell him of your interview with Lord Braisted? I did not. Why not? Was he not interested? If he had returned to Prague. Didn't you write to him in Prague? No. Give me that dispatch, please. Have you ever seen this before? The usher will show it to you if you like. You needn't trouble, I know it quite well. Was it Count Mickler's dispatch here? Yes. What did he use it for? Keep papers in. Important papers? Yes. Thank you, you may sit down now. Now, will you please take a piece of paper and a pen? The usher will give it to you. Usher, give the witness a piece of paper and a pen. I have my own pen. That will be better. Now, will you please write down these words as I read them to you, in your ordinary handwriting? I have seen B today. So far, he has only offered 10,000. Hang on. He will come to our figure. Will you please give it back? Thank you. Lord, maybe it's the mark. Lord, what is this supposed to be? At the moment, I have no idea. You will see in a minute. Now, will you take that piece of paper back? Now, will you please write at the top? Dear Mikla, please don't interrupt. Mr. Manring, this is not the moment for interruption. Have you written that? Yes. Now at the bottom, add these words. Yours ever, D.W. And date it March the 22nd. Now will you please hand it to his lordship. Sir John, would it now be convenient to tell the jury what is the purport of this document? At the moment, my lord, only as an example of the witness's handwriting. Oh, is that all? Mr. Waterhouse, if you had written such a letter to Count Mickler, it would have a very sinister significance, would it not? But I never wrote such a letter. I didn't ask you that. But if you had... I don't see why. Don't you? Listen to it. I have seen B today. B might stand for Lord Braisted, might it not? Today is the 22nd of March, the date of your interview with Lord Braisted. At the moment, he's only offered 10,000. 10,000 pounds was the precise amount that you swore Lord Braisted had offered you. Hang on. Count Mickler was in Prague waiting. He will come to our figure. Lord Braisted is sworn that you asked him for 20,000 pounds. This is utterly ridiculous. Perhaps. But if you had written such a letter, might it not have borne a very sinister interpretation? No. My lord. Mr. Waterhouse, Sir John is only putting to you a hypothetical case. If you had written such a letter, might it not bear a very sinister interpretation? Perhaps, but I did not write it. Didn't you? Mr. Waterhouse, did you not write a letter in precisely those terms to Count Mickler? No. Look at that. My lord, what is this? Perhaps Mr. Waterhouse will tell us. What is this supposed to be? If you ask me, your letter to Count Mikla. It is a lie. I never wrote such a letter. My lord, I must protest against this. Sir John produces a piece of paper that I have never seen, and which the witness says is not in his handwriting. Give it to me. Perhaps you had better see this, Mr. Manry. I tell you, I never wrote such a letter. Please be quiet. How do you propose to use this, Sir John? My lord, I propose to prove that this is in the handwriting of the witness. This is monstrous. We've never even seen this document. Of course not. It only came into our hands last night. And how do you propose to prove that it's in the witness's handwriting? By the usual method, my lord. I shall ask you to call Mr. Smithers, the handwriting expert. Experts? <laughs> and I shall ask the jury to compare the writing with what the witness wrote in the witness box five minutes ago. Where is the telephone? Just over there, miss. Oh, thank you. I'll be putting your luggage on the bus, miss. Oh, 
Hello, may I speak to Mr. Waterhouse, please? Mr. Waterhouse isn't in. Now, well, it would be light, I expect. Hmm? Is there any message? All right, I'll tell him. Evening news, please. Thank you. On the 22nd of March, you were staying at the Savoy Hotel, were you not? You know I was. Did you write the letter to Count Mickler from the hotel? No, I did not. My lord, this letter is a forgery. You must say that, mustn't you? If it is your letter, you stand convicted of having lied to us, do you not? It is not my letter, it is his letter. Forged by Lord Bracey? Yes. Then how do you explain it's been found by my solicitor in Count Mickler's dispatch case? But it was brought back from Prague. My lord, may we see those two letters? Certainly. Members of the jury, I never wrote this letter. I could not have written such a letter. And all you can say is that it is a forgery. It is a forgery. And forged by Lord Bracey. Why not? He has committed murder. Why should he stop it there? Quiet, please. My lord. May I ask a question? Of course. What is it? This letter is addressed, Dear Mickler. We understand the witness was a close friend of Count Mickler's. He called him Stepan. This morning, another letter was read to us. It began, Dear Stepan. Why does this letter begin, Dear Mickler? He's right. I've never written to him like that. I've got letters here that I wrote to him, scores of them. Give them to me. Look at these. Dear Stepan. Dear Stepan. Dear Stepan. I have never called him Mickler in my life. I see your point. And rather a good one. I don't believe those two letters are in the same handwriting. Members of the jury, it is of the utmost importance that you should form no opinion on this case until the evidence is complete. We shall have to use that letter. Or perhaps Lord Brace did my care to interview. It's absolutely but... necessary. You see for yourself. I don't believe it. You wish me to use it or not. All right. Fetch Lady Bracey. No, no, no. She doesn't wish to come into court. Unless she's not in court, I shan't use the letter. Hurry. Right. My lord, as you have already heard, the witness denies having written such a letter. Oh, Lady Bracey. Yes? Sir John wants you in court immediately. Must I come? If you want him to use your letter, yes. Is it going badly? I'm afraid so. Then let him use it, but I don't want to go into court. He won't use it unless you do. All right, I'll come. <laughs> And you still maintain that you never wrote that letter? Yes. Mr. Waterhouse, you are forcing me to adopt a most distasteful course. I shall have to bring a lady into this case. Do you wish me to do that? I don't know what you mean. Don't you? I understand that you deny having written that letter to Count Mickler. I do. And he is dead. Yes. Have you written a precisely similar letter to someone who is alive and who is at this moment sitting in the court? Certainly not. Did you write it to Lady Braisted? Never. Think well before you answer. A short time ago, I asked you if you were very much in love. Do you remember? Yes. Were you in love with Lady Braisted? My lord, what possible issue is this directed? Is this absolutely necessary, Sir John? Absolutely necessary, my lord. And I do not wish to be interrupted. Very well. I shall not reject the question. You hear? Will you please answer? Are you in love with Lady Bracey? No, I am not. Were you ever in love with her? Well? I was very fond of Lady Bracey. Were you ever in love with Lady Bracey? I was very fond of Lady Bracey. Isn't that enough for you, Sir John? No, my lord, it is not. Mr. Waterhouse. Lady Braisted is sitting in front of us now. You can imagine what this cross-examination means to her. I want you to give the jury your opinion of her. Is she a lady whose word you would unhesitatingly accept? Yes. Not a liar like her husband? No. Did you ask her to leave her husband and go away with you? Never. Please. Did you tell her that although you had no money at the time, you were in a position to get a great deal? My lord, this is monstrous. 
My friendship for Lady Braisted was before her marriage. My lord, Lady Braisted has given evidence. She said no word of this. Are you surprised she kept silent as long as possible? Did you not only say you could get the money, Mr. Waterhouse, but write it? No. Now, will you take this bundle of original letters in your hand? Darling, you needn't trouble to interrupt. You should see them all in due course. Are all those letters in your own handwriting? Yes, they are. There is no doubt about it? None. So they are not forgery? No. And they are all written to Lady Bracey? Yes, but before her marriage. Now we come to that. Will you look at the first one, please? Is there any date? No. And how does it begin? My darling Helen. And it is not dated? No. The next one. Any date? No. And how does that begin? My own beloved. Will you speak louder, please? The jury can't hear you. My own beloved. Thank you. And the next. No date? No, it just says Monday. It just says Monday. And how does it begin? My own beloved. And all the others, no date? No. And you say you wrote them all before Lady Braster's marriage? Yes. Rather convenient for you that you forgot to date them, was it not? You don't expect love letters to be dated, do you? I wouldn't know. It's a long time since I wrote a love letter to a married woman. Now look at this. My lord. I will not be interrupted now. Mr. Mannering, please sit down. Mr. Waterhouse, is that your letter? Yes. Where did you get this? From the lady you wrote it to. That's a lie and you know it. Don't be rude to me. That is a very improper observation. Give me the letter. Is this your letter? Of course it's my letter. You ought to see this, Mr. Mannering. I have given him a cover, my lord, if Mr. Jansen's just made. May the witness have it back. I'm going to read it, Mr. Waterhouse, but for reasons which I hope you will appreciate, I shall read only the body of the letter. I shall omit the beginning and the end. I have just left his lordship. If he thinks I'll keep quiet for 10,000 pounds, he's mistaken. I told him it wasn't good enough. It'll have to go high. This time I understand you do not deny that this is your letter. It is my letter. Then what does it mean? I told him it wasn't good enough. It'll have to go higher. You wanted 20,000 pounds. It means nothing of the sort. Then what does it mean? It means that I was not going to be bribed, that I was going to the Prime Minister. Oh, it'll have to go higher. That means you are not going to be bribed. It does. Look at it. Is that a love letter? How dare you ask me that? I think the whole letter must be read, Sir John. Is that absolutely necessary, my lord? I think it is. My beloved, I have just left his lordship. If he thinks I'll keep quiet for 10,000 pounds, he's mistaken. I told him it wasn't good enough. It'll have to go higher. You know what that means, but I'm not afraid. You are always in my thoughts. I love you. I love you. I love you. Derek. No, I did not write that to Lady Braisted. What? Derek! Are you trying to bring some other lady's name into this case? Do you think it is more likely to be believed? Of course you can invent any name you like, provided she's not here in court. Well, to whom did you write it? Think for a moment before you answer. Lady Braisted is in court. This must be a very painful incident to her. Do you still insist that you did not write this letter, which you admit is yours? To her? Yes, I do. Why should I deny it if it is not true? Shall I tell you why? Because you thought she would be ashamed to admit this story in open court. That's not true. Why should I write still letter to Lady Braisted? Do you want me to tell you that too? Yes. Do you insist upon it, although she's sitting here beside her husband? Yes, I do. Because you were her lover. That is a lie. Another lie? Helen, tell them it's not true. Derek, you know it is true. <laughs> Mr. Waterhouse, you have seen Lady Braisted leave the court. You are now free to say just what you like. 
You still insist that it was not to her that you wrote this letter? Yes, yes, yes. Then will you tell us the name of the lady to whom you wrote the letter, about 10,000 pounds? Why do you hesitate? You've already disgraced one woman. Why do you hesitate to disgrace another? Who was it? I won't say. Thank you, Mr. Waterhouse. That is all I have to ask you. <coughs> Sorry to be late. You're not the only one. Isn't Mary here? No, not a sign of her. But she telephoned from the airport to say not to wait for her because she mightn't be able to make it. Did you speak to her? No, she left a message with Morton. No explanation as to why she had to fly home like a mad thing? Not a word. Oh, well, I expect we'll let into the secret in due course. <laughs> I expect so. Is the case over? Yes. Grace had one, I suppose. 10,000 damages and the papers to present to the public prosecutor. Aren't men fools? Are they? Of course they are. A woman judge would have dismissed the case at once. That would have been most irregular. It would have been most sensible. Let's go in, shall we? Excuse me. Did you want something, Miss? I was looking for Mr. Waterhouse. Oh, he's been gone some time, Miss. The case was over an hour ago. Sir John, but may I speak to you? Of course, Mario. What is it? This letter, sir. What letter? Uh, the one the young man is supposed to have written in your case this morning. What do you mean, supposed to have written? There's a picture of it in the lunch edition. See here. Well, what about it? You see that notepaper, Sir John, with a heading with a little design. Yes. And the letter is dated March 22nd. Well? But that paper was not made till the month of May. Are you sure of that? Absolutely, sir. Can you produce any evidence to prove what you say? Evidence, Sir John. Uh, orders, uh, invoices, records. Well, they would be in the manager's office. Take me to him, will you? Excuse me, my dear. Oh, no. I'm coming with you. That is perfectly correct, Sir John. The first sample was submitted on May the 5th. We accept him on May the 7th, and the first deliveries of the new papers begin on May the 18th. Can you give me the address of the printer? Certainly. Here it is. Thank you. And I'd like to borrow the file, if I may. But of course, Sir John, of course. Thank you. You shall have it back in due course. Thank you. Good day to you. Just a moment. Perhaps the letter was dated a mistake. March the 22nd instead of May the 22nd. It says, I have seen B today. The writer saw a bracelet on the date on the letter. March the 22nd. The actual day on which they met. There must be some mistake. I don't see where. You mean the letter was forged? Exactly. And the forger was unaware that the letter paper had been changed. I told you a woman judge would have thrown out the case. You know, if you say that again, I think I shall beat you. <laughs> Sorry. What are you going to do? The only thing I can do. See that these papers are sent to the public prosecutor at once. Without telling Lord Braisted? You can tell him. But you're still acting for him. I can hardly go on acting for him at the same time, see that this information is sent to his opponents. Wait a minute. What about the other letter? How do you explain that? I can't. Are you suggesting that was a forgery too? I'm not suggesting anything. I'm going to try to find out. Sir John, I beg you to see Lord Braisted before you do anything about this. No. There are still some rules in our profession. There is no rule which forces me to send a man to prison when I know that he's innocent. But you don't know. There may be some explanation. Lord Braisted should be asked. Very well. You ask him. Derek. Who's that? How did you get in? The porter opened the door for me. I told him I must see you. You needn't have bothered. Derek, what's the matter? What's happened? Why did you write to me like that? It was stupid of me, wasn't it? I should have known better than to put anything in writing to you. I don't know what you mean. Don't you? Don't you remember what happened to that letter? What letter? What letter? Derek, I honestly don't know what you're talking about. I can't see why you take the trouble to lie about it. The damage is done now. Huh? Derek, for goodness sake, tell me. What am I supposed to have done? The night before you left for Salon, if you remember, I wrote you a note. 
This morning, your father produced it in court as evidence against me. How could he do that? How could you do that? But if you wrote it to me, how could it be evidence? Oh, that was quite easy. You see, I didn't mention your name. I merely called you beloved. So your father was able to convince the jury that it was written to Lady Braisted. What did the note say? Don't you remember? I told you, Derek, I didn't get it. Are you sure you didn't? Positive. I'll tell you something else. Daddy wouldn't have used it unless Lady Braisted had given it to him. She must have got hold of it somehow. Derek, you know I'm speaking the truth, don't you? Of course I do, darling. What a blithering idiot I've been. Please forgive me. That'll be easy. <laughs> Where do we go from here, I wonder? That's easy, too. We're going to see Lady Braisted. No, not me, thank you. Please, darling, I need your moral support. But you can leave Lady Braisted to me. Come on. I'm sorry, sir. Lady Braisted is engaged and can't see you. That's the room, darling. Lady Braisted. I sent word that I couldn't see you. I'm sorry, the lady pushed past me, my lady. It's all right, Johnson, you may go. Well, what is it? Two months ago, Derek wrote me a letter. I didn't receive it. But this morning, you produced it in court and said it was written to you. I want that letter back. You're too late. The public prosecutor has it. Does he know you stole it? My dear child, I don't know what you're talking about. If you didn't steal it, how did you come by it? In the usual way, through the post. It's a lie. Then I suppose all the other letters that Derek wrote to me were lies also. No, I know about them. Derek told me he'd written them. But that was before I met him and before you married Lord Braisted. Do you really believe that story? Of course, because it's true. Well, it's not what the jury thought in court this morning. Lady Braisted, Derek might go to prison. You're in love with him, aren't you? Yes. Enough to do anything for him? Yes. Well, I'm in love with my husband. Nobody else means anything to me. This morning in court, I risked everything, even his love, by producing that letter. Do you think I'm going to spoil it all now by saying that letter was never written to me? It was intended for little Miss Deering? Because if you do, you're a bigger fool than I took you for. You can't mean it. I most certainly do mean it. You haven't a shred of evidence and you won't get any from me. Now, please go away. You bore me. Good evening, Morton. Daddy will settle this in five minutes. He's the cleverest man alive. Yes, yeah, so far he's been a sight too clever for me. Nonsense. Come in and tell him the whole story. Hello, darling. Ah, so you decided to come home at last, young lady. Darling. Sorry I couldn't make it before, but I was busy. Daphne is very much better. Ah, good. I'll tell you about her later on. At the moment, we've got more important things to talk about. You both know Derek, don't you? Yes, I think we know each other pretty well. May I ask why you've come here? That's quite simple. I'm going to marry him. Oh, that makes everything perfectly clear. Sit down, will you? Have a cigarette. You don't suppose I wanted to come? Rubbish. He had to come. The silly case has been muddled up quite enough already. It's going to end here and now. Tell them who that letter was written to. All right, I will. He wrote it to me. I'm not going to say you don't believe me. Well, of course I believe you. If you really do, that ends this stupid business once and for all. Of course. When did you get this letter? I never got it. Oh. There's no need to look so beastly legal. I tell you, he wrote it to me. May I ask how you know that? Because he told me. That's quite enough for me. He never mentioned it in court. Why not? Would anyone have believed me if I had? Would you have believed me? After all, you told me that I had disgraced one woman. I didn't want to disgrace another who wasn't there. Did you post this letter? No. What did you do with it? I left it here. When? The day I went away. Who did you give it to? To your butler. Of course, everything has to be confirmed. That is the law. It's also common sense. Morton, do you remember Mr. Waterhouse giving you a letter addressed to Miss Mary? Yes, Sir John. When was that? Do you remember? The night before Miss Mary went abroad, sir. I'm afraid I forgot to give it her. What did you do with it? I gave it to Lady Deering, sir. I understood she was going to readdress it. Did you readdress it? You know, I didn't. I'm afraid I forgot all about it. Most helpful. And you never saw it again? No. Was there anybody with Lady Deering when you gave it to her? Yes, Sir John. Lady Braced it. I 
see. Excuse me. All right, Morton. Good. Lord Bracelet, please. Sir John Daring. Lord Bracelet? Yes. Has Mr. Mercer been in touch with you? He has. Yes. Now, I want to talk to you about something quite different. Some information has just come into my hands regarding the other letter. The one your wife said was written to her. Yes, that's what I said. I think so, too. Anything you say, of course. Very well, I'll be there at 10 o'clock. Yes, that suits me all right. All right, goodbye. Well, Daddy? Well, what? Derek wants your advice. Professional or otherwise. Otherwise. My advice is marry the girl. Well, I was going to do that anyway, sir. Oh. What I wanted to know was when you could give her away. I should think. That's easy. When I tell him to. Of course, I shall deny it. And I'll be believed. Who do you think would take Derek's word against mine after today? Even if he's got witnesses? What witnesses? Some silly old family retainer. I never heard of anything so ridiculous. He'd be lying too, I suppose. But of course, darling. Look, if they want a fight, they can have it. You're not going to take this lying down, are you? Not if that's the way you want it. Arthur, there isn't anything else, is there? What do you mean? Anything you haven't told me? No, no, there's nothing else. Then that settles it. We've been in worse jams than this before, and we've come through all right. But we must fight. I'm a little tired. I know, darling. We'll talk about it in the morning, shall we? Yes, in the morning. Helen, tell me something. Has it been worth it? What? Our oh, marriage, everything. I have one regret. That's what you mean. That's exactly what I mean. Darling, I wouldn't have had it any other way. Whatever happens. I'm glad. That makes all the difference. Good night. Aren't you coming to bed? No, not yet. I've got one or two letters to write. All right. Come along. Helen. I'm glad he didn't write that letter to you. Silly. Do you think I would have shown it to you if he had? No, I suppose not. Anything else tonight, my lord? No, thank you, Johnson. I'm just going out to post these letters. Can I post them, my lord? No, I think a little fresh air will do me good. Good night, Johnson. Good night, my lord. Put it by the bed, will you? Yes, my lady. Did somebody go out just now? His lordship, my lady. I think he went to the post. Oh, good night, my lady. Good night. Outside, Martin. Uh, you'll need your coat, sir. Thanks. Uh, excuse me, sir. Okay. 
You won't be late tonight, darling, will you? Rather not. I might call in at the club for a minute or two. It'll just come by hand, sir. Thank you. Frank Manning has some misguided idea I can beat me at billiards. Listen to this. I'm sorry my husband will not be able to keep his appointment with you this morning. An accident occurred last night. You were quite right. This case was a matter of life or death to him. Helen embraced it. Poor woman. John, do you think he... I don't know. None of our business whether he did or not. Well, that's an end of that case. Yes. Are you in court today? Yes, Mackay against Rosenthal. My money's on Mackay. That's a pity. I'm acting for Rosenthal. <laughs> 